Hi everyone, I am Sanya Kole, and in this video, I'm going to teach you some Excel tricks and especially how you can find the count of all of the um, different and unique items, especially if you have a list of items in Excel um, and there are some duplicates in it. How do you find the count of each of the different items in it? You know, the duplicates, how many times it, does each of the items appear? And how do you do that in a couple different ways in Excel? So that you can excel, just like this little smiley says. So I'm Sanya Kuller, and I'm just going to show you some examples. So let's say that this is our original data here. You know, it's a just a bunch of parentheses here, you know, uh, different items here. You know, like 55 uh, or 56 different items and cats and cats multiple take place at the same time. You know, uh, you know, multiple of the same items. So I kind of sweated it so that you could see it, that there are some of the similar items like and cats is already appearing twice as we can see and dogs is appearing and like is just like one time. But we wanna find out how many times does each of these items appear? Um, you know, we could see this right off the bat, but let's say that it was not sweated. For some reason, I just should say, you know, I, I did not sweat this. And how would we do that? So what we can do is we can do something that's called count. We can add like some column and we can just put a value one. So this is just going to be um, counts. So counts is sort of just going to represent the number of rows. It's going to help us keep track. So in a way, um, we can just say that each row just has a value of one. And that's going to be helpful, especially because we can sort of put this into something known as a pivot table. So again, we represent each of these rows with the value one. Then what we can do is we can just select this data here and we can just type in pivot table. And these things um, in a new worksheet, yes, you can put it in a new worksheet. And um, this used to intimidate me before, but the more you practice with pivot tables, the better. Um, they're actually really useful. So I'm just going to show you the simple application of using them here, but there are many ways you can use them. So we can just do original data as rows. So what you're going to see is that this is just essentially the pretty much the same thing as all of this data here that we've added the counts to. But what we can also do now is we click it and what we want is for the rows, if we put it as columns, it would go across this way. Um, it's up to you, but since we have so many um, different types, then what you want to see is, um, okay, well, let's just put it as rows. And for counts, we can put that for values. So that's one way to do it. So what we see here is that we actually have the counts. So we can copy this as well from the pivot table, and then we can just paste values here. And then this would just give us each of the row labels and the sum of the counts. And then they usually have this blank here, but you can see that these are the 56, we, we got rid of the blank. So these are the 56 different rows that we had here. So if you remember, we had 56 rows here, 56. Hence, that's why, um, again, this is 56 rows, um, you know, from two all the way to 57. So um, that's why the grand total is 56. And we can sort of see how many times each of these elements actually appears in this list. And this is just the unique. Actually, if we look at them, we have just 43 unique different pairs, like and cats, you know, of, of different pairs. We just had 43 unique, but we had 56 total rows, so we had duplicates. And just another way you could have checked that out is if we had taken this, we select this, copy it, and paste it into a new sheet, and then do data, and then do um, remove duplicates in this column. 
and 14, 44 unique values. Um, that's counting the header. So this is just 43 unique. 43 unique, which is exactly what um, this had detected, 43 unique. 43 unique, and it gives us the count. So we can see and cats is twice, and dogs is twice, um, cats and is twice, cats, dogs is twice. These are happening, um, these are all happening twice. We can also just, you know, go to data and filter again. We can also like sort them from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. This is the grand total. We can also just look at the ones that happen maybe three times, for instance. There's just like and I the ones that happen twice. That's something that's pretty cool. So um, that's one way to do it. So that was kind of showing you an example using a pivot, um, pivot table here, where again, we just put the original data as rows and the um, values are the sum of counts. So the sum of counts is just basically because what we had is each row had um, a value one, so that when we were adding them, this is the pivot table. When we were adding those counts, that's just basically summing over the number of rows. So in a way, it's telling you the number of rows. The many different functions that you could have here. You can have the count, the average, the min, the max um, as well. We could also try the same thing. Counts is, would give you the same thing. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, you know, if we do the max as well, um, it would be one, so that would not work. So we just, we want to just either do like a sum or a count. Sum is just adding one for each row, it's just adding the number of rows. Um, and it's a way of visualizing this data where it's saying, okay, this is and and cats. For every, every one that is and and cats, it all has a value one. Let's just add those up together so we get two. So if I had changed this to, let's say, three, for instance, you just have to be careful that you keep the counts to one. And if I do like refresh all, this would allow me to refresh the pivot table. And then this is four. So again, like if I had changed this to being three and then this, then this would have been four, which is not good. So, um, you know, because this is just happening twice. So this should just be one. So please make sure that this is all ones here. Um, to the pivot table, and then we can just do refresh. Refresh allows you, once you've made changes in the original data that the pivot table is referencing, which is this, then if you do refresh, it'll get updated. So another way you could do this, if you remember right now, what we did is we had removed the duplicates, and we have found that they were 43. So I can just have the, unique. I can have this just as a unique data here. And then what I could do is I can just have the unique data and then I can also just have all the original data here. Um, and so what we'll see is that for instance, this gives me the 56 unique ones. No, no, sorry, the, six, the 56 total ones that we have even with the duplicates. And this one has the unique ones, the 43 unique. And then what we can do is we can use something called a count if function. Count the number of cells within a range that meets the given condition. So for the count if, what we want to do is we want to just look in this column G here. So because we don't want to really worry about how many items are in this, we can just do G to G. Or we could also do like, um, this will just select the entire column, or we could do like G2 to like um, G57, and that would select this whole thing. It can be either way. Um, and then the criteria is for this one, we want to count it if we want to basically go through this column and count if it is what this is, if it's and and cats. So we will get two. And again, we could do G2 to G57, but sometimes it's a little bit stressful to make sure you've gotten the right everything. So you can just do G to G. This is just selecting on the column G. It's looking at column G and it's basically looking for this term here in this column. 
and it's counting if. So it's going through, it's scanning through this. And right now it's beautifully done, it's sorted, but if it wasn't sorted, then you could imagine that, you know, it's going through and it's sorting through this and saying, okay, and cats, yes, one for that, and cats, yes, one for that, and dogs, zero, 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 zero. Like that's what it's doing. It's only counting, it's only counting everything and it's going through this and only counting the number of matches that it finds. So it's looking for and cats in this whole column. And then it's counting if that's the case. So you can just um, click this. You see this tiny little square. You can just drag the square down to the bottom. And then you'll get the same thing. You're going to get the counts. So again, you know, this, this is, this is match is looking for and dogs in this list here. So it's looking for A3 in this. And then this is looking for and comma like in this list of all the items. And similarly, and meat, and it's counting if it's and meat. So now we just have the counts for all the items in our list. Um, and we have the 43 unique ones and the number of times that they appear. So that is how you can do this using Excel. So I hope that you can Excel with this count. So I'm Sanya Kuller, and I hope that you found this was helpful. There's a lot of really cool things with Excel. So um, please ask me any questions that you have, and please subscribe if you found this was helpful. Thank you, and have a great day. Hi, guys. This is cute little Yangshi, and he's also so happy that you can learn these little tricks in Excel um, and tips as well. Like, how do you count the number of times some items appear in a list in Excel? So we really hope that you um, found this helpful. So this is cute little Yangshi, and I'm Tanya Kole, and we're so happy. Rock on. Aww. We just want you to X sell. So thank you guys for watching.